Hey everyone, Acat is here, and today we're going to start a let's play of RimWorld 1.0. For those who haven't heard of it, RimWorld is a roguelike game that has role playing and strategy elements. You manage a small number of people who have crash landed on another planet. The whole game is randomly generated, including events that happen along the way. The idea is to help your people grow, manage a colony, and potentially build a spacecraft to return to wherever they may have come from. Now, before we get playing, I should let you know that this is still in beta and we have to forgive the developers any bugs we may encounter. They have publicly announced it as an unstable build, so... Okay, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is start a brand new game. And we're going to use the default crash landed scenario. That's where you start with three people. Um, we're going to totally randomise this. Before we get to choose those characters, there are three storytellers in RimWorld. The storytellers uh, drive different events into the game. So Cassandra is the classic storyteller and the progression through the difficulty of events gets tougher and tougher as you go throughout the game. We are then going to look at Phoebe Chillax, as, uh, as her surname suggests. This is a more peaceful mode. Um, Phoebe will give you lots of time between disasters, you get a chance to build your colony uh, and prepare for attacks. Finally there is Randy Random. He doesn't follow the rules. Uh, the events that you get are totally random. They could be absolute lovely, wonderful events where lots of resources fall out the sky. But it could be the total opposite where lots of uh, bad guys come, storm your place and kill you within 30 seconds of starting the game. We're going to go with Randy Random just to see what happens. I haven't played a playthrough of this before, so hopefully it makes for a more entertaining let's play. I'm going to set the difficulty to medium because I'm not a savage. I'm going to set a random seed and generate a new world. The first thing we have to do is select a starting area. The best thing to go for, if you follow the tutorial of the game, is an area of temperate rainforest. Or temperate forest, rather. With a flat terrain type, as you can see here. I'm probably going to steer clear of the Conqueror's Lagoon, the Karina's faction. Perhaps steer, stay a bit closer to some of these settlements down here. Let's just make sure this one has a flat terrain type. As it does, good average temperatures as well. You don't want to be too close to any of the poles because it will make, more, make it more difficult to grow uh, fruit, vegetables and some of the things that you need to survive. Also in the colder temperatures your, your settlers will need uh, better survival gear, better clothing, etc. Otherwise they're going to have a bad time. We don't want to have a bad time. So, this seems like a good spot to me. Let's get going. Okay, so the first thing we can see is you get to start with three characters. So there is eight randomly generated for you. I'm going to totally randomise these three again and leave nothing to chance. Or everything to chance as this way goes. What we are looking for is people with great construction. However, I am going to just take the first thing that comes. Construction is great at the start of the game as it allows you to get building really quickly and give you the things that you need sooner on. Now, not everybody can have certain skills, which we'll find out later in the game. These team skills at the bottom are possibly some of the more important ones to start the game with. But let's take three random characters. So we have Keiko Philly Griffin. She's a 73 year old. 73, okay, 73 year old female colonist. She grew up as a story writer and was a nurse in her adult life, which is, which is part of the backstory of why she has um, great medical skill and great artistic skills. She's not very good at construction, she's not very good at mining or anything useful at the beginning of the game. You'd think a 73 year old might be able to do a, a bit better with her cooking, but there we go. The next one we're going to randomly generate is Dennis Sellers, who's a 31 year old, also grew up as a story writer, improving his artistic skill, 
and as an adult was a bartender, which gives him some cooking, social and melee skills. Of course, all bartenders are constantly in brawls, I should know, I was one myself, I had many fights. As a disclaimer, I never had any fights as a bartender. So, he's a fairly all-round kind of guy, which is really useful. The skills can be trained throughout the game. And we have, I'm going to have a go at this, Sjord Bowman Lucas. The uh, middle piece here you see is the uh, an alias that each or a nickname that each character gets given. So Sjord Bowman is a 22-year-old male colonist. Was a pilot fan as a child, which increases shooting and intellectual skills, and a starfighter pilot as an adulthood. So took that uh, childhood dream right through which again greatly increases the shooting melee skills but has reduced mining animals artistic and greater intellectual also cannot be a doctor there are other traits as well which will affect the randomness of the game but we're just going to let that play out as it happens so let's generate our map while this is generating this is not my first playthrough of the game. I have played it a few years ago when it was in earlier beta stages. This is the current public unstable build. Um, you can go and get that on Steam. There's uh, no extra requirements as long as you've purchased a copy of the game. Just go into Steam, uh, go into the game properties, click on the betas tab and change to the public unstable beta. Right, so, the three of you awake in your crypto-sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Let's hope we do survive. And here we go. And we have a little kitty friend, Yuka. Let's hope you survive, Yuka. Right, here on the side you can see things um, that immediately are required. You'll get notifications like this throughout the game. First thing we're going to do is go straight into Architect, Zone, build a stockpile zone. This is an area where colonists will dump things. We're also going to go into the Work tab and make sure all the colonists have Construct Skill enabled. Really important at the start of the game because if only Bowman is constructing, things are going to go a lot slower. Also going to enable the mine grow skills for all colonists. Plant cut. And that should be about it for now. Okay, but before they move any of this stuff, we need to unforbid it. zoom out a bit. Sometimes the materials fall a little further apart as you can see here. Raccoon. Dangerous creatures. Stay away from raccoons. And while they move that stuff I'm going to ask them to build some walls so we can build a basic shelter and get them some beds. This will form the start of their base. We can only deal in wooden walls for the moment. Research opens up for us a little bit later on, but let's get them settled first and have them somewhere warm to sleep. As you can see, the game starts in spring. Things get more difficult in winter. You also need to get things growing sooner. So I'm also going to build a growing zone. That should be a sufficient size for the time being. And we're going to set that, we'll leave that as potatoes. There's quite a lot of wild animals in the area. Great if we build our hunting skills, we could probably hunt some idex. For the time being, we're going to eat the rations that we've got. Build this house slightly. 
this house is no good without a door. And we're going to want them to build some beds. And somewhere for Yuka to sleep to. Let's light the room up. Nobody likes the dark. Another thing we can do is expand the home area in the game as well. The home area serves as an area where the colonists will clean if told to do so. So any surfaces here that are mucky they will clean if there's any blood etc from a gunfight. Hoping that's not going to happen but knowing Rimworld that's almost certainly going to happen. They will clean it up. If there's a fire that spreads into the home zone they will, they will put that out as well. And sometimes while, sometimes at the cost of their own life. Colonists are not exceptionally geared towards survival. There are some weapons here as well. I'm just going to check which one of these guys had the shooting skill. It was Bowman. Make sure Bowman has the rifle. Philly is incapable of violence which means we'll not wield any weapons or get involved in combat. Dennis has decided to go to sleep. Where's he start? No, cloud watching, it says down here. Equip the revolver. These flat plants should provide better protection as well. You can see Bowman is automatically equipped the flak vest. The colonists will do things like replacing their clothes as soon as new clothes are available if they need to. I don't think they will put this on until it's been hauled, but they're prioritising growing first. Okay, so while they do that, I'm going to mark out a new area. We're going to build a kitchen. As you can see, we don't have enough wood stored. not the end of the world. We need to give the colonists some orders to cut some wood down. Cut all of the wood in the vicinity of the home. That should be enough. We're going to tell them to haul these steel slag chunks because they're quite useful. Taking a break, are we? So, as I might have alluded to before, the ultimate objective of the game is to escape this planet. Have a look at the research here. We haven't built a research bench yet, so we can't actually do any research, but we can have a look at the research products that are available. Some of it is to do with comfort, things like making carpet, there's also drug production and things to help with, let's see that's probably to do with medicine and some of it's probably not to do with medicine, if we look at that one. But there are other medicine productions. All roads mostly lead to building a spaceship. So here we have the Starflight Basics followed by reactors, a Johnson Tanaka drive, I assume some sort of warp drive, Crypt vacuum crypto sleep caskets for the colonists to sleep in, AI persuasion, starflight sensors. So all of these things are going to be required to be researched in order to build a spaceship later in the game. 
but as you can see there's quite a lot of stuff we need to do before we can get there. These numbers in brackets indicate the amount of effort required to complete the research in that area. Now the better the colonist is with the research skill, see these are all fairly average at the time being, which is good, the quicker they will get that stuff done. Okay, looks like the colonists are now building the kitchen up. I'm just going to drop in production. We can see there is a fueled stove that can be fueled with wood. And they need recreation variety. So, rec recreation tab. We can find a horseshoe's pin, which is the most basic. And we'll stick it outside the house. If they get a bit bored, they can throw some horseshoes at a peg. That sounds great. I think I'd rather do something else. But then I'm not the one crash landed on this planet either. If we really want, we can make the place a little bit nicer and put some wooden floors in. Where are you going, Dennis? Before he walk. Well, look here. We can see the current need and needs and the mood of this colonist. Food and rest is naturally going to go down across the day. Recreation is going up because he's currently having a walk. Everybody loves a good walk. Clear the mind. The current beauty of the area affects mood as well as well as comfort for how they're sleeping, where they're sitting, and other things. Mood is a very important factor of this game. Colonists can lose their minds, and that's not a good place for you to be if you're trying to manage them all through to building a spaceship. The last thing you want is somebody to lose their mind and try to get involved in building a spaceship. Colonists colonist that does lose their mind can do all sorts of things, like attacking other colonists, which is never good. Even the cat needs food as well. Not entirely sure what the cat's going to eat. Raw meat, corpses, animal products, meals, processed foods, and kibble. Looks like the cat can actually probably eat some of our packaged survival meals. The stove has been built but hasn't been fueled yet. In order to make some meals from it, we can tell them to cook a simple meal. Now I'm going to set that to 3 and do until you have, that's not 10, say do until you have 3 meals. That means that the colonists will cook meals as soon as they've eaten them, just make sure we've always got more stock. like it's night time now in the colony. 9pm. As we can see here, year is divided into four quadrums. Quadrum essentially is a season, 15 days long each. Seasons can be different in different quadrums. As soon as we've gone for a temperate rainforest towards the middle of the planet, it's a general spring, summer, autumn, winter cycle. We can speed up the game a little bit whilst we wait for these guys to sleep. Tomorrow, when the colonists are awake, they will carry on with all the tasks that have been provided. The learning helper up the top helps you keep track of the things that you have already learnt before. Those were showing grey. You see the game's still moaning about recreation variety. Although I've 
assigned this, it hasn't been built yet, so I'm going to wait for one of the colonists to wake up and we'll get them to prioritise building that. So, he's just going to have his lunch. And he's playing horseshoes. That looked like a good hit to me. Well, that's probably all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. As it happens, this is the first time I have recorded commentary, so thank you for bearing with me. Please leave a comment with any feedback and suggestions so I can bring you better and better content. It would be greatly appreciated. Please also remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another episode of RimWorld. Take care.